Cool. Thanks, Amelia. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good? Oh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> I'm a little bit excited to use this uh, pulpit. It's pretty cool. I was thinking yesterday, I was like, oh, what are we going to use? We didn't bring something, but this is classic bass retreat. We make do with what we can. Cool. I have a word on my heart. It's not going to be very long, so um, just going to jump straight into it. I want to talk to us about rest, R-E-S-T, and let's just open up our Bibles to Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Sweet. The students have been out hearing God this morning and they're going to share back now. Okay, Hebrews 4 verse 1. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you may fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. What is rest and how do I actually get it? This has been the question of my life the last two years. And I've had to wrestle it out because I've had to learn a lot of things about what is rest? What is real rest? And how do I get it? Does more time give me rest? Uh, more free time give me rest? A couple of holidays. What do I need to be someone who operates in rest? As a teenager, my idea of rest was to every weekend sleep in till 1 p.m. Like who, who remembers those days? You're just like... You wake up and you, you only wake up because you're hungry. You're not waking up because you can't sleep anymore, right? It's like you wake up, you go downstairs, you eat. And then for me, I would like watch Rage, like music videos. Rage, I don't even know if Rage is still on, but <laughs> it is. Okay, it's still on. But it's like this was what I thought was rest. Um, and then, you know, as I grow up, I learned that I have these responsibilities. That I can't just switch off and just sleep in until 1 p.m. And she'll be right, mate, you know? And God began to speak to me a lot about what rest meant when I began to take on more responsibilities. Because rest is important to God. And Hebrews 4 tells us that God has a Sabbath rest for us today. Today. And God says that rest is important. But I think sometimes we misunderstand what that definition of rest, rest can mean. And one of the best definitions I've ever heard of rest was by my friend Trish. And she used to be on staff here. She was on the leadership team, we were discussing this once because we were both the same age on the leadership team, carrying a lot of responsibility. And, you know, she just said to me one day, says rest is received by faith. And back then it really struck a chord in my heart. And I've meditated and brewed on that and, and really let that sink into a new level of understanding. But I didn't really understand it until we pioneered Youth Adventures. So Youth Adventures is when we partner with a high school and that's Orange Christian School for this time. And we take their year nine and year 12 students on an overseas outreach. And the first time we ever ran it in 2012, 2012, we had our overseas outreach and we're taking their year 12 students. So they're in the middle of their HSC and they'd signed up to do a missions trip to Fiji. And I had Sai and Zach Yoda and myself being the YWAM staff. So here we are pioneering this new thing. We'd met with the school the year before. I'd been driving out, doing these meetings, setting everything up. Everything was going according to plan, or so I thought. I'd worked really hard. I was like, okay, we're on top of it. I think everything's going to be cool. Then Australia decides to launch this big tourism campaign that makes Fiji the spot to go for July school holidays. I didn't know this because I don't watch TV, right? I'm like, now I've just checked the news on my internet. But I remember like going to Travel Studio, we'd been very prepared. We prepared like what we're going to uh, do with the flights. And Angela from Travel Studio calls me and she's like, says, I got some news for you. I was like, okay. And she's like, there are no flights to Fiji. There are no free flights to Fiji now, no seats free for the dates that you want them. And I was like, okay, we'll shift around a couple more dates. She's like, no, there's no flights that whole week. And I was like, but it's February. <laughs> We're going in July. We're ahead of this. We're on to it. I've got the deposit. I don't have the flight money, but what the heck? Like, talk about feeling a little bit stressed. 
So I immediately called the school, I explained the situation. I was like, you know, we are, we were advised that this was a good time to start doing um, the flights. We have not been lazy, we haven't been passive. We're just in a bit of a sticky situation. We looked at all these alternate routes. Do we go to Melbourne? Do we go to Brisbane? Um, and nothing was working out. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, like there actually isn't anything I can do right now. I can't change the HSC exams. I can't just get a plane. <laughs> I was, I mean, my mind was going crazy with possibilities. And I remember thinking, I, this is all I can do. And I was stressed. And I went to Sai and we had a chat. And I said, let's just meet in my room after dinner and just figure this out. And I was expecting to pull this all-nighter of just planning ideas and going crazy. And I'm in my room and Sai comes in and we sit down together and I explain to her what's going on. And we both look at each other and we're like, we need Jesus' help right now. Like there's nothing else we can do. We need Jesus to come in and rescue us. So we prayed and we heard the Lord and we prayed specifically. And then we just stopped and looked at each other and I was like, well, that's that's actually all we can do. Uh, it's past 5 p.m. Nothing's open. I'm going to hear from them in the morning. We're going to see what else we can work out. I'm thinking we're going to have to cancel Youth Adventures. And I'm like, great. It's not like we've got a relationship with this school, with Youth Adventures already, that they're going to understand that we're not this irresponsible. <laughs> and I was just thinking about all this stuff. So Sai goes and I'm in my room and I remember just being like, right, what can I do? Fast pray, knees, carpet, face, all night. <laughs> I'm going to get this through. And God was like, says, do you think that I can do this? And I was like, do what? And he's like, answer your prayers. I needed 19 seats on a plane. And I was like, God, yeah, I know you can do this because you're God. You can do anything. And he was like, okay, well, go to bed. And I was like, uh, I haven't finished my work. And God was like, go to bed. Trust me, I've got this. And I actually really felt the faith for it. I was like, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. So as I was climbing in bed, I'm thinking, I feel so responsible. Like the part of me, it's like, I'm going to sleep when there's work to be done, but I can't do this work. God, I just trust you. So I climb into bed, go asleep, wake up in the morning to an email from Travel Studio. Can you call us right away? I'm like, okay, great. I get on the phone and I call her and Angela says to me, says, you're not going to believe this. I was like, surprise me. I'll believe anything right now. <laughs> She's like, we just had a cancellation for a group of 20 people on a flight to Fiji. And it's on the exact date you need to fly. 20 seats. I only needed 19. But God was saying, I'm not the God who provides just enough. I'm the God who provides more than enough. And I actually learned my lesson on what real faith was that night. That faith was believing the right thing about God. But, you know, hearing his voice and obeying him. And I received rest. I actually had rest, not a passive rest or not a she'll be right attitude rest or, well, they've done everything I can, I guess, whoops. <laughs> but like rest is received by faith. Rest is received by faith. How do I get my soul into a place where I can rest in the Lord? What do I need to embrace that's going to bring my soul to energize, to be energized when I put my hand to a task? Like, how do I rest? Because the Bible is telling us that there remains a, rabbit, a Sabbath rest for the people of God. So God models that rest is important to us in Genesis, right? Like, he rests on the seventh day. And I know we don't believe that God rested because he was tired. But he did something to demonstrate, I think, a lesson for us on what rest really means. And that it's something that, you know, just like a good father, he's, he's an example to us to rest. That it's not, maybe it's not about being tired that we need rest. Something to think about. Why did God rest and what was he trying to tell us? Why did he rest? He rested because his work had been completed. And I think God was demonstrating a definition of rest that God completes what he starts. And that there's always going to come when we step out of the boat and we make a faith step. There's always the part that we do and the part that God has to do. And we've got to discern that part that we do, that's our obedience. Like that step that we hear God on that we do. And then the rest that we enter into is our inheritance. Because the Israelites never entered the rest because of their unbelief. They didn't inherit the promised land 
And I was planning this word before I even realized the whole theme of base retreat would be this entering the promised land and inheritance. But it's like they didn't enter in because of their unbelief. They couldn't rest. They wandered around and around and around the wilderness. And they were weary and they were tired. And it was their unbelief, their complaining that stopped them from entering that place of rest. I've totally been there. It's easy to read, you know, about the Israelites and be like, guys, just come on. God's doing so many amazing things. Why don't you just believe him? But I think in my own heart sometimes I really am challenged that is my soul really at rest with believing the right thing about God? Like, do I really believe the right thing about God? Because if rest is received by faith, we need to have a little bit of a talk about faith. And I think it's been so cool to have different ones of us come up here and just explain what faith means and loved Chris's word too. But faith is believing the right thing about God and faith is about our focus, about what is that goal? What is that thing that we're going for? What's the big picture? You know, Lauren Cunningham, LC, I wrote LC because I didn't have enough um, room on my page to write it here. So just keeping with the acronyms weekend. LC, if you are living a life of faith, Your faith is based on knowing who God is. Jesus promises that if we come to him, we will receive rest. And Jesus actually says to us in John 14 that, you know, you have faith in God, but have faith in me. Have faith that I am active in your life, that I have come, that I am doing what I've promised, and I will complete what I started. Don't just have faith in God is good. He's great. You know, Sarah Go to bed, I've got this. Thanks, God. I know you're just saying that to make me feel better. (laughs) Or do I actually go into bed and sleep peacefully knowing that I believe that God is actually going to take care of it because he spoke to me? It's really simple, but it took me a long time to get this. And I actually think that the last 12 months especially, I've become more and more energized with what God's called me to do because I'm understanding this a lot more, that I love what I do. I love being who I am, and I love embracing the calling that God has in my life, but I had to really fight for it, guys. Like, if you don't accept God's dream of you, you're not going to inherit the promise that he has in your life. There's going to be a lot of distractions, and anxiety is the biggest distraction of all. And you cannot be still and know that God is God when your mind is just full of thoughts, full of worst case scenarios, full of what ifs, full of opinions and thoughts and attitudes that are other than God's opinion of you. You know, last year I like had this conversation with a friend, super unexpected, and he just spoke so much truth into my life that it literally just unlocked something I've been wrestling with for years. Hey, guess what? I'm a leader. I'm a girl and I'm a leader and it's okay. (laughs) I can be feminine. I can be a girl. I can be wanting a guy to protect me sometimes. I cannot have the answers. I'm Sarah McCutcheon. I don't have a personality like other leaders I respect. But I embrace God's call of me. And when I embrace it, I enter his rest because I stop trying to be something I'm not trying to be. (laughs) And it's like, guys, it took a lot for me to get to that place. And I feel like, man, I'm in such a place of rest. And it's not because I don't have anything to do. I'm in such a place of rest. And God wants to give you that as well because basically real rest is active faith. Real rest is active faith. And it's actually me acting out of what I believe about God and really wrestling with that in a place that becomes so personal and so real that I'm making decisions out of it. Not because I should or I have to, but because I actually believe in what God's telling me to do. It's setting your soul at rest when it could be stressing out because, like, I think rest is responsible. Like, God, the most responsible person of all rested. And I think with what God's doing with these changes in the program and with the increase of responsibility that a lot of us are going to need to step into, maybe there's some definitions we have about what our life will look like if we take that step, if we grab that increase, if we have to do something that we know at this stage of our lives we can't do. But I know for me, like every time I've had to step out, God's grown in me what I need to do in order to receive what he's promised. And I just felt so strongly like this last weekend before, before I even thought I was going to give a word at base retreat, 
I just felt strongly that, hey, maybe this isn't just a word for me. Maybe it's for some, some others of you. That you haven't really embraced who God's created you to be because you're still worrying about whether you fit into this place. And God's actually wanting to lift your eyes back up to focus on Him. And then the other thing I was just getting is just that, you know, guys, rest is received by faith. So what do you really believe about God? Because if you believe that He's not going to provide for you or that He's not good, you won't be open to hear what He has to say to you anyways because you, you're worried that, man, what if God calls me to a life of missions? Like 16 years ago, that meant to me a life of difficulty because of some wrong ideas I had about God. But now on this side of the obedience, I'm like, man, the last 16 years have been epic, like unreal epic. And I'm not just being positive. I have loved the last 16 years of my life. And people, they come up to me and they give me all these compliments and say, oh, I just love your job. and I, I, It's so cool what you're doing. And how can I do what you're doing? And I was like, man, it's just obedience. It's actually not this plan that I came up with. It was the obedience that just was one yes at a time, one step and yes, at a time. And then God, you know, did the rest. I think God knew I couldn't handle being told like 16 years ago, hey, Sez, you're going to be in missions for a long time. Next year, I will have been in missions for exactly half my life. It's crazy. Like 17, I was 17 years of age when I came here. And next year, it's my 17th year in Wyoming. And I'm just like, whoa, I'm actually living the dream. Like I'm living the impossible. I'm I'm living the things that I was afraid to believe in the seat you're in 16 years ago at a base retreat when I was like not open to this because I didn't trust God, didn't understand who he was, didn't believe who he was. So real rest is not something I achieve, it's something I receive. I can't strive the faith that I need in order to have rest. Like real rest is not something that I achieve, it's not something I'm like, so now go out guys and just get rest, get more faith. It's actually something I receive. And, you know, like, I love that faith comes by hearing. And we need to hear what God wants to speak to us during this time. And that's why I think Base Retreat becomes so special because we just get all this time to sit around, to hang out and to be around nature and to just listen to God. And so God speaks. He's been speaking this whole year, but the stuff that he can get our attention on in times like this. So rest. R-E-S-T, like honestly rest. What does this actually have, Where? what place does this have in your life right now? Is it just going to bed at nine or is it sleeping until 10? What makes you come alive? What's going to energize your soul? What's going to keep your mind still? It's going to be believing the right thing about God and believing in what he's told you to do and believing in who he's created you to be. That's the big one for me, you know, like I can do this because I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. But I actually can say that now with confidence of the experience of knowing that God's come through so many times. So I just felt two things. God has a gift of faith for what he has called you into. And I just got this real picture of like, I don't know, do you remember Dragon Ball Z? How they had those little fireballs in their hands? Okay, I'm glad that some people, sometimes I'm making references and people don't know about these things. I was like referencing this movie this week at The Little Mermaid and one person knew about it. And I was like, okay, I need to update my pop culture. My childhood is not their childhood anymore. <laughs> but Dragon Ball Z, you know, they had these like fiery balls and they'd like throw them at each other. I had this picture that God wants to give you an actual gift of faith. And that there's some of you who just haven't made the step because you're waiting for something. Well, wait on the Lord because he's going to give you a gift of faith to grab a hold of and to actually start believing in. And that once you make that decision and you step out, there's going to be rest that you're going to receive. And just the rest, whether it's rest for your soul that's believing for something that you haven't quite seen yet, or whether it's rest for things that are impossible that you can't change. Because one thing's guaranteed in our jobs, <laughs> and I'll use myself as an example, I can't actually do my job without God. I can't change a heart, can't have somebody get more confidence, I can't set anyone free, <laughs> can't explain God in a way that they're going to encounter his presence. It's got to be God that does the God stuff and we're in a God job. <laughs> so it's just as soon as you can recognize that, yeah, we need to depend on God and our jobs make us decide that that's possible every day, then there's a gift of faith that God wants to give you that you can hold in your hand and it's actually tangible and it's actually real. 
And the second thing was, what is stressing you out? Like, what is actually stressing you out? And the fear thing's been a big theme this weekend. And I wonder if it's something that that some people just haven't quite recognized that behind all these worries and concerns and anxieties and things that are keeping you up at night, maybe it's just a fear issue. Maybe it's a tree with many branches, but the the trunk is just a fear issue. And with fear issues, I find them so easy to deal with when I realize that they're just a lie. The fear is a liar. And behind every fear is a lie. Every fear. And if you can ask the Lord, what's going on in my soul right now? Oh, what's going on? You know, like, Lord, search my heart. What's going on? And then recognize if it's a fear thing, what's the, bli- what's the lie I'm believing in? What's the lie that's actually causing this fear to, to be energized in my soul and wreak all this havoc? Because then truth can actually speak to us and set us free. And guys, you can be free from fear. Like you really can live a life free from fear. And you can enter into God's rest and be people who are energized doing the work of God because we want to be doing what God's called us to do for the rest of our lives at the pace that we can do it with our whole hearts and not, oh my gosh, just waiting for the weekend. But actually be like waking up on Tuesday morning or Monday morning if you go out in the workforce and be excited about what God's got your hand to the task on and feel energized by it. And that's, that's I think, part of the inheritance that I feel just to speak out to some of you is that you actually can like your job, that God wants to give you a passion for it, that God wants to bring some perspective on your life that isn't just a gap filler or I'm doing this because it needs to be done, but it's actually like needs your heart. And that God wants to get that faith gift and plant it in there that's going to cause what you're doing to be so significant it's worth waking up for. And honestly, at the end of the day, <laughs> It's because Jesus is worth it, right? Like we, we, I'm so blessed to be in this community where we just so value Jesus because he's the reason why we're doing this. And if you have people in your workmates who can continually remind you of that, I think it's keeping the main thing, the main thing, that all of this at the end of the day is because Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, is worth it all. So I wonder if we could just close our eyes and I just want us to be able to focus on this So there's two categories of people. One, people who need a gift of faith for what they've been called into. And the second is people who are just feeling stressed out. It's feeling really like anxious, heavy burdens, worried, just whichever. I want to speak to you uh, both, but I'm going to start first with the people who need the gift of faith. I just want to ask you if that's, if that's you, and we've got all our eyes closed, so hopefully we're just really focusing on our hearts. If that's you... I would love to invite you to stand. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to ask, and I'm going to expect us to receive a gift of faith in our hand. So if that's just you, and you've been struggling to read, believe the right thing about God for why he's got you doing what you're doing, or who you are, or whichever, there's a faith issue in your life right now, I just want to invite you to stand. Even if you're the only one standing, I want to pray for you. And I wonder if you could, as a prophetic act, if you feel comfortable, just put your hand, hand out, one hand out, so that's the picture I got so clearly is that God's going to place something in our hands. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. God, you promised that if we ask anything according to your will, that it is ours. And Lord, we just thank you that you have a gift of faith for each person who is in need of it right now. God, I pray for personal faith. I pray for faith that changes perspective, faith that adjusts angles. God, I pray for a gift of faith that would be a weight in their hand, that would be a tangible understanding of the presence of God in their life. Lord Jesus, I pray that if anyone is holding out a faith that has been a bit challenged, a bit limp, a bit dry, Holy Spirit, we ask for you to energize it once again. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus, to see you, to see the author and perfecter of our faith. God, we fix our eyes into your gaze. And Lord, we just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would begin to just speak to us, that we would hear your voice on the things that we need understanding on. God, I pray that we'd hear your voice on the things that we've taken to that we need the faith for. God, we open our ears and we are just anticipating you to speak to us. God, we receive 
by faith, the gift of faith for this season, for this job, for this relationship. God, give us faith to grab a hold of what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. And then the second group of people, and maybe you stood up just then, that's okay, you can stand up twice. <laughs> Both these things happen in my life, so I'm only too happy to pray for you. Let's close our eyes again and just get to that place of just really focusing on our heart. If you're aware of a fear issue in your life that's just growing like a weed, if you're aware of a fear issue in your life, just even this weekend, that's just you haven't quite done a prophetic act of like taking a stand and resisting this fear, I just want to make time for you to be able to stand in just a moment. And as you stand, I'm going to pray that God would re reveal the lie to you just personally, whether it's in this moment or tonight or tomorrow morning, the lie that you've believed, the, the, the deception that even you've come to like focus on that's causing you to be living your life in worry and fear and anxiety. If you want freedom from fear, and I mean like a, a something that you just feel like, oh, I just can't seem to move forward in this. I'm not in a place of rest. I don't go to sleep. I just let my mind run and run and run and run, and I'm exhausted when I wake up in the morning. If you want to receive real rest and say no to fear, then I want to invite you to stand, and I'm going to pray for you as well. I'm standing up as well because I feel like this area of my life, I just have to be fierce with it. And I want to stand and just really confront some lies in my life as well. So thank you, Jesus. I'm going to get us to say something in just a minute. And basically, it's just three lines. The first one is, I am loved. I am a lover. So I'm a loved is the first one. Second, I'm a lover. And the third is, and I live in the love of God. You can just keep your eyes closed because I want this to be a private moment in a corporate setting. <laughs> you know, just that truth. I'm, a, I'm loved. I'm a lover and I live in the love of God. I want us to speak that truth out over our lives and I want us to speak so we can hear ourselves because I think we're going to call our spirit to attention and just like this is the truth and our words have creative power and I feel like as we speak this out, we're going to create some new understanding. We're going to create some a commitment to God to believe the truth. So, um, yeah, I am loved. I am a lover, and I live in the love of God. Got it? Okay. So, in the count of three, one, two, three. I am loved. I am a lover, and I live in the love of God. Again, I am loved. I am a lover, and I live in the love of God. One more time. I am loved. I am a lover, and I live in the love of God. Father, we just receive right now the faith that we need and the truth to confront the lies of the enemy. God, I just pray, Father, that if anyone is living um, in a life of fear because of some lie that is just un not, hasn't been uncovered, Lord, I thank you that your truth is light, and God, your truth is available to us. And I just ask, Lord Jesus, that we would have um, this revelation why we're out here at Base Retreat, that people would not be hopping in the van and going back to Lewis House without an understanding of what lie they have believed about you and about who they have been created to be. God, I just, I just ask right now for freedom from fear. Lord Jesus, that we're really hammering this this week. And if we have to continually stand up and confess and pray out who you are, God, we will. But we will be ruthless with fear. We will not allow any room for fear in our lives. And God, I just pray that you would give us the sword of truth, each person standing, the sword of truth, that would be empowered to defeat the enemy on this, God, that they would lay, that you would lay that sword in their hands and that they would grab a hold of it and that they would, be, they would be ruthless with the enemy's lies in their lives. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would bring fruit, truth and freedom and I ask, Lord God, that you would set their souls at rest. Rest with who they are. Rest with the way they were made, Lord Jesus, and rest with the things that you're calling them into and what they're going to grab a hold of in the future. We just thank you and we receive by faith. I wonder if anyone's sitting down, if you can just stretch your hand out. We're just going to cream style prayer just to finish up. And people who are standing, I just want you to, to just receive just because that's what you're doing. You're not, you're not striving. I don't want you praying out. I don't want you like trying to be fearless. Just take a stand. You're standing in truth. And just pray if, if those around us can just all pray together, whatever's on your heart, that you just want to speak out truth over these people. And then we'll wrap it up.